one of the things that I, I, I think about a lot is, you know, uh, we're all very good at the physical side of things. Uh, you know, that's what we do. That's what our roles are. We can, we can, you know, we're probably confident in our abilities to coach. But one of the questions that, uh, you know, Ross has just touched on it there is technical, tactical, uh, psychological, plus the physical side. And I just wonder how much uh, we can often disconnect into our own little world uh, to just rely on the physical side of things and, and how often we find that we may need to, you know, we all need to club together on all of those things. Uh, you know, if there's an issue, it may not be strictly physical. Uh, so how do we get better at getting that message across to, to to other coaches? I think it's very easy for someone to come and watch a game. and We've probably all done it shouting at the telly saying, you know, people are not fit enough. But there's a whole lot of other things, and especially in youth development, you know, they, uh, Nick touched on the air peer group pressure. Uh, some kids travel big distances. Uh, some kids, you know, as they get slightly older, we have exams as well. Their education is important. Uh, so as coaches, we need to look at, you know, how can we get better uh, at getting better with them? Because ultimately, we are looking to develop players. We are looking to, to get them hopefully into to professional uh, status, professional sport. Uh, but I think sometimes it's very easy to disregard uh, everything else that's going on within someone's life, uh, you know, psychologically, and uh, you know, maybe they don't understand the technical, tactical sides, and only ever look inside ourselves and just, well, it's not a physical problem. Um, and I, I just wonder, you know, it's, it's more of a question to the panel, you know, how as coaches can we get better at that? How can we get better as looking at things, you know, with the whole whole is greater than some of the parts? How do we look at a broader horizon? Uh, because I think we touched on it earlier. Sometimes there can be a disconnect, uh, a huge disconnect. If you go back to Erica's point there at the start, you know, we can have kids tumbling and throwing shapes and, and doing whatever, you know, we, we think is chaotic. We know those reasons as to why we're doing that. Uh, but you may get a technical coach come in and, and say, right, I don't want that anymore because – they maybe don't understand that. It's our job to explain it. The parents don't like it. It then suddenly becomes a very difficult situation. Um, so I think we do need to get better at uh, these things. Yeah, Andrew, I mean, I'll take that because I think that's something that I'm really interested in. I think as an industry, maybe we've kind of isolated ourselves per se or, or kind of look at physical as kind of an isolated component, whereas actually we're only going to really develop these um footballers and children if we're really working together and, and and driving them on so you know the physical side has a small part of it of course um an important part but a small part of it and actually actually gaining the knowledge of technical coaches ta like the tactical awareness going and doing some coaching courses potentially understanding the sport more and working as a group of staff all round that's how you're going to get the best kind of individual programs for that player and not working in isolation it strengthens the relationships between the staff and it also kind of really improves your knowledge around what that player needs to progress on in my opinion mm -hmm. mm, absolutely i think uh one of the things we'll always do is uh you know we'll always look at that physical component as uh you know that's our little baby that's what we do uh but like you said you know i think we've all actually spoke about it tonight there's so many other influencing factors in performance um, then maybe we do need to get out of this little bubble a little bit of just the physical side of it and integrate everything uh, as a whole. I think it's important to keep open communication between the, the players, the parents, and, and the team coaches as a fitness coach. Um, so if a parent says to me, hey, um, this kid has had a lot of homework and a really stressful week or a death in the family, then maybe that training session is going to be a little bit different than me constantly being in his face and teaching new things that day. It might just be a little bit different um, and just kind of give him time to, to relax and enjoy. Um, and then as far as keeping communication open with the coaches, uh, just knowing their practice schedule, their game schedule at all times. Uh, I know I work with uh, a lot of youth players, but it's it's still important to to manage the load and the stress of the youth player because they do have a lot of stressors in their life. So it's just good to keep communication open uh, to take care of the the player's mental as well as physical health. So I think I think you know, sports scientists have done themselves a disservice in in, in the early years. 
um, and I, I've tried to be all things to all people and, and I've come in sometimes probably like bull in a china shop and, and put off coaches and, and you've had sports scientists not talking the coaches language and coaches not necessarily understand sports scientists. So again, as, as with kids, it's good to talk and it's good to communicate. And I think that the really effective support personnel, sports scientists, you know, just develop relationships and understand what's going on and be at practice and, and see what's, as Eric was saying, see the, the additional demands that are being placed on the children. Yeah, I just think we have to all be better at communicating. Like, you can have all the X's and O's in the world. You can be the best scientist. You can be the best S&C coach. But the, the teams that are dysfunctional and the support staff that are dysfunctional are the ones that don't communicate, that, that don't get the messages across effectively. So I think, you know, as support personnel, we, we've got to be better. Um, we've got to be a little bit more humble. Um, and then in terms of how can we be better with the kids, I think, again, we've just got to, we've got to stop teaching like, like little robots. We, we've got to come down to their level and make it enjoyable, make it engaging, communicate, understand the kids that you've got in front of them, understand what makes each one of those tick and excites them and motivates them and, and bring that into your sessions and, and make sure that you enjoy your sessions as well.